This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and exciting times. It's nice when we see laptops and Ultrabooks actually evolve for the better. This is the 2015 Dell XPS 13 and some things we know and love about the XPS 13 are still here like the aluminum lid, the carbon fiber interior, but the size of this, this is about the size of an Inspiron 11. You might almost mistake it at first, but it's a 13.3 inch laptop. Fifth generation Intel Broadwell CPUs, full ULV CPUs in here, none of that Core M stuff. So you have good performance, a variety of SSD drives, a couple of different resolutions. We're going to check it out now. So here it is, the latest generation of the Dell XPS 13 Ultrabook. And at first blush, other than the size, and let me tell you, when I took this thing out of the box, I thought the, the wrong thing must be in the box. The box was so small. It was so small. But anyway, other than the size, you might think it was an older generation, but not really because you know what? The lozenge look is gone. You know how the lid was had very rounded corners on it? always reminded me of kind of a silver lodge lozenge. This one is more squared off. I think it looks pretty good, too. And you get the Oreo cookie effect right here. We have the black on the insides, the silver. No more carbon fiber on the bottom. Dell's going with the metal finish over here. We still have the usual service tag door. Now spring-loaded and easy to open, not something that you have to fight with. And for those of you who are not into Dell's and don't know what that is, that's where you're going to find your service tag, serial number, that sort of thing. Obvious vents over here. The shape on the bottom is pretty much similar to the previous. We have it raised up, so we have these little rubber feet areas here that are very grippy. And to give some clearance for the ventilation area here. If you want to take off the bottom plate, you can do so like most Ultrabooks, not wildly upgradable. It has a bunch of teeny Torx screws. Pretty easy to spot where those are on here. RAM is soldered on board. It has an M2 SSD. And of course, the wireless card is socketed as well. It's quite slim too, 0 0.33 inches to 0.6 inches at the back. That's 9 to 15 millimeters for you folks who speak metric. 2.6 pounds for the non-touch screen version, 2.8 pounds for the touch version. Nice looking taper here. I, it might not look as thin as it is, and that's because relative to the overall size of the machine, small machine here, you know, you get the idea. So on the side, we do actually have full-size ports here. I know there have been rumors about MacBook Airs losing all their ports and getting ultra-thin and stuff. Well, don't worry. We still have the usual barrel connector here. Dell always goes with a mini display port. If you use HDMI, it's not the end of the world. There are mini display port to HDMI adapters. You can find them for like 15 bucks, 20 bucks or so. USB 3.0 port. There's another USB 3.0 port on the other side. We got our combo mic headphone jack, and this is the battery charge indicator that Dell always includes on the side. So you can see little light up LEDs there. Speaker grill right over here. And on the other side, we have a SD card slot. The card will stick out about one third of the way for those of you who carry your laptop around with a card inserted in, in a bag. There's the other USB 3.0 port, and there's a security lock slot. Black on the back, pretty, pretty clean design, not so different from previous XPS models. Sturdy, no flex, feels like you could hurt somebody with it, just what you expect, again, from a Dell XPS model. Now, in terms of size, I'll tell you, when I took it out of the box, like I said, I thought that this was an 11-inch model, and and let me just show you here. This is my Surface Pro 3. I was almost a little miffed as a Surface Pro 3 owner, feeling, well, I got one of the most compact light things on the market. They are just about the same size in terms of footprint. It is amazing that Dell managed to get 13.3 inches into something this small. I actually checked it with a tape measure to make sure it really was 13.3 inches, and yes, it is. So we got our 12-inch Surface Pro 3 here, and about comparable size. And when you have the keyboard, connected to the Surface Pro 3. They're actually pretty similar in weight, too. So if you can't carry this with you, you can't carry nothing with you. That's all I can say. It's pretty darn amazing. Now we have a direct competitor here. This is the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro, also running on Intel 5th generation, generation Broadwell CPUs, but using the Core M, which is the slower variant. So you're going to get more horsepower out of the Dell. But both of these are 13.3 inches, both running Broadwell, both weigh 2.6 pounds. And look at the difference in size. Oh, snap. That's really something, right? So you get the idea. Dell has certainly accomplished much when it comes to 
sizing there and they've actually put a higher wattage CPU in versus the Yoga 3 Pro. And if you guys are interested in the smackdown between these, just shout out in the comments and let me know and we'll do it. Lastly, with the latest generation 13 inch MacBook Air. Now, I know there's going to be reviews out there that call the, the new XPS 13 the MacBook Air killer, and I kind of think those things are silly. Laptops don't kill other laptops. They're just too nice to do that. But in, in terms of somebody looking for something that is stylish, very portable, and has incredibly long battery life, which we'll get into, you could, you could call it a MacBook Air killer, especially when it comes in a size that's closer to the 11.6 inch MacBook Air. All right, next thing here, we finally have it open and behold, yonder two millimeter bezels. It's crazy. Dell calls this an infinity display. It's clad in Gorilla Glass NBT. This is the 1080p 1920 by 1080 matte non-touch version, which is in the low end of the price range. There's also a QHD plus option, so you get that 3200 by 1800 resolution glossy touch as well, which would compete obviously with the Yoga 3 Pro and other touchscreen products. No digital pen option here, capacitive only on these displays. We'll talk about the display a little bit more later, but it gives it a stunning look. Like It makes you think, why did nobody ever do that before? It's not that they can't put small bezels on laptops, but the display area has to match the bottom chassis size. So if they need room to put in components, the battery, the CPU, the fans, all that stuff, the bottom has to be a certain size. They have to match the lid. That's one of the reasons why bezels tend to be bigger. The more you miniaturize, the more it costs, basically, in terms of engineering, the more challenging it is. So one of the reasons why the XPS 13 is not one of the cheapest products on the market. Now you might say, hey, I see it starts at $799. That's pretty cheap. That's for the Core i3 with just 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, and the non-touch 1080p display. So kind of low-end specs there, especially when you're talking about a high-line product. XPS is Dell's high-line product. It competes with the higher NHP Envy models, with the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro, obviously, things like that. The next model up, this is the one that we have right here, is $899. Not a bad deal, although I still think of the Asus ZenBook UX 303 LA for the same price. It gets you a touchscreen for the money and 8 gigs of RAM, but we won't say anything. I just did. I did just say that, but you know what I'm getting at. 899 gets you 4 gigs of RAM still. That's not the end of the world. For those of you who just do word processing, web surfing, you play your Netflix, everyday kind of stuff like that, 4 gigs of RAM is fine. I know 8 gigs is becoming more the norm though on the higher tier items. And the RAM is soldered on, so you can't upgrade it afterwards. So if you want that 8 gigs, order it with 8 gigs. That will add $100, making it one of the more expensive 4 gigs of RAM that I can think of. 128 gig SSD is standard, and it still has the 1080p matte non-touch display. The model that a lot of you really want is $1299. Then you get the QHD touch screen. Now, I don't think QHD is really a necessity here, honestly, given the size of the display at 13.3 inches. But using Windows 8.1 without touch is sort of like typing with two of your fingers taped together. It's just frustrating, especially for a smaller device. If it's a 17-inch machine that you're using more as a desktop or replacement, a gaming machine where you're spending most of your time in the desktop, yeah. Something like this just invites you to go swiping on the live tiles and stuff. And a lot of Metro apps, for those of you who use them, expect touch to be available as an input, so it's not quite the same experience. So that's why the 1299 model with touch is more appealing. Then you get 8 gigs of RAM. You still get just 128 gig SSD there. No matter which one you get, you get dual band Wi-Fi, inner to 11 AC. It's a Broadcom module. Dell calls it the 1560 Dell module. And it has very good reception and throughput. I've been quite pleased with it on our Wi-Fi AC network. Intel hasn't actually been making some of the best wireless adapters, so I'm happy to see that on there. You get Bluetooth 4.0 as well. Trackpad right here, nice matte glass trackpad. And this is a Microsoft Signature Edition, so there's absolutely no bloatware on here, by the way. Our 128 gig SD, SSD has 90 gigs still available. There's not even any special trackpad drivers, but Microsoft's on this crusade now to try to take back the trackpad. There have been some pretty, let's face it, crappy drivers out there. Hit or miss, Elan, Synaptics, different driver versions. This works very reliably. It's easy to use. It supports multi-touch. So 
I like it. I'm not sure I'd say I like it as much as the ThinkPad Yoga trackpad, because Lenovo does a really good job with some of those ThinkPad trackpads, or the MacBook Air, but it's pretty good. It's not flaky. It's not annoying. It behaves properly. Keyboard is backlit with two-stage backlighting. There is a button here that can control the backlighting if you wish. 1.3 millimeters of key travel. Nice shape, typical Dell-shaped keys, very ergonomic. That's not a huge amount of key travel there. You can see how much it moves. It's enough. I like typing on it. It's very tactile. I wouldn't mind more travel. And something this skinny, you're just not going to get it. Rigid as anything. This does not really budge per se. And this carbon fiber here feels good, looks good, is easy to clean up with the damn cloth as well. So good job there. Power button is lit up and is on the side. In terms of one oddity though, because the bezels are so small on this, there's no room up top for the webcam. So here it is, down here. Awesome, you can show people your double chin and the hairs in your nose, right? That's unfortunate, it is. So. But there's no other place to put it. Another reason why we tend to have bigger bezels maybe on laptops. And here we have it from the side, not just to show you what a stunning figure it cuts from the side there, though it does look awful nice, doesn't it? This is as far back as the display goes. That's fine with me. It's far enough, especially because this is the matte model. That's one nice thing. I do wish it had touch because it's easier to interact with Windows 8.1, but there's like oh, no glare. There's a little bit of a reflecting of a spotlight we have directly over the head for our studio lighting. It's great, and it also makes the screen seem brighter. One thing about glossy displays is you have to fight the glare to cut through, so the display doesn't need to be as super duper bright to look bright and be viewable in a fairly well-lit room. So our model comes with the Core i5. Most of the XPS 13 models do. Like I said, just the base model comes with the Core i3. And there is one Core i7 option. That one is priced at $1599. So this has the Core i5 5200U. Again, fifth generation Intel Broadwell CPU, 2.2 gigahertz base clock rate. It does have turbo boost. 15 watts ULV CPU, just like the Haswell before it, but it can also step down and operate at very low power. We've seen it use as little as 3.3 watts when it's just sitting there and showing me a web page. That's, uh, that's very good. Again, four or eight gigs of RAM, those are your options right there. It's soldered on board. Whatever you ordered, that's what you got. That's how it's always going to be. 128 gig SSD on most configurations. You can get a 256 for only $100 more. That's not a bad deal. And there is a 512 gig option. Since it's an M2, you can source one and replace it yourself if you wish to do so later on. In terms of performance, well, it performs much like Intel fourth generation Haswell CPUs. No surprise there. Intel didn't claim that there was going to be any super duper performance change here. Really, it's about using less power, allowing manufacturers to make smaller designs because you don't need as much room for cooling and ventilation, and you don't have to use bigger batteries. In fact, so this has a 52 watt hour battery in there, nothing bigger than we saw in previous XPSs, but lasts longer. And we'll talk about that too. So PC Mark 7 scored 49. 52. PC Mark 8 Home, 2841. 3D Mark 11, P1101. That's the performance mode, 720p testing. This has Intel HD 5500 integrated graphics. By the way, no dedicated option on something this small. W Prime, a computed pie at 19.81 seconds, about par for the course. Geekbench 3, 2810, single core, multi core, 5515. So good scores there, doing better than the Yoga 3 Pro. So let's talk about the display a little bit. I mean, obviously, even here on film, this looks quite nice, and it does once again help that it is matte, so it's not reflecting anything else. Here we have our desktop view right there. I've got it at 125% scaling. I can tolerate things pretty small. You might want to go with the default 150% scaling. Sharp IGZO panel, whether you go with the 1080p matte non-touch or with a QHD plus touch screen. Either way, you're getting sharp IGZO, which is a very power frugal display technology. It also has very good color gamut, nice contrast. It's a pretty looking display. We've seen this used in a couple of other laptops before. I haven't noticed terrible problems with image retention or anything yet for those of you who are worrying about it. But anyway, it helps certainly with battery life to be using that and it's good looking. In terms of brightness, right now we have it at maximum brightness right there. 
and it's a fairly bright display. Again, it's a little hard to tell when you're using it with, with matte and no reflections there, but I find most of the time 50% is adequate for indoor use. If I'm in a really brightly lit environment, then I might want a little bit higher. In terms of color gamut, very good. Adobe RGB 78%, sRGB 98%. Uh, color tuning out of the box was the typical kind of a little too cool, which makes things look brighter, but people are used to that these days. Every laptop comes calibrated cool. We actually use our Spider Pro cal colorimeter in here to calibrate the display and do the measurements, and right now it is calibrated, so it's a bit warmer, and the reds are a little bit more accented, as they well, actually should be. Web page text is easy, sharp, and clear to see right here, and pinch zooming on the trackpad works really well, which is great since, again, you can't touch the screen on this particular model. You could go with the QHD one and touch to your heart's content, but looks lovely. So let's see how it does with video and watch one of our video reviews. Then we'll watch the Ghost Pro video, another nice matte screen model, only this is a gaming laptop. Two finger scrolling, as you can see, works just fine as well. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's something I don't get to do every day. This is the MSI Ghost Pro, a 15.6 volume gaming laptop. I mean, it's like 4.2 pounds, they say. Our scale says maybe a couple ounces more than that. So it sounds good, right? It certainly looks lovely there. And again, it's like having a big screen TV with this, this little barely there kind of bezel. So it's a very nice effect. And even if you get the higher resolution touch version, you get a teeny bezel too. So you know where you're going to win with that one. So like most Ultrabooks, the battery is not removable in terms of there's no little latch to release and pop on out. If you unscrew all these screws here, you can get to the battery. It is a 52 watt hour four cell battery, which is a pretty good capacity battery for an Ultrabook. But thanks to Broadwell, which is very power frugal. Now again, it's going to depend on how you use it. And the benefit with Broadwell is if you're doing light tasks, which many of us spend a whole lot of time just leaving our computer sitting in Word or Excel or a web browser or something, it can just sip power and just use a couple of watts of power. So the interesting thing is when I look at Windows prediction of how much battery life I have left, it often says things like 12 and a half hours with 96% charge left. That's pretty darn impressive. Dell claims 15 hours for the non-touch and 12 hours for the touchscreen because the touchscreen is much higher resolution, that's why, and that eats up power. And now manufacturers are always optimistic, but so far this is the only Windows laptop in the size range, 13.3 inches, I've found that without extended batteries or anything like that actually manages to last as long as a 13 inch MacBook Air, which is to say I've been managing 10 hours on this without really trying just leaving it at the balance power setting, brightness set to 50%. Nice. Really nice. Something this small, this easy to take anywhere, this light with that kind of battery power, good times. And just think, someday we'll get the Windows 10 update for this absolutely free, and it'll be really interesting to see what it's like to use this then. So that's the Dell XPS 13 2015 model available at the end of January, which is right about now. If you want that QHD touchscreen, you're probably going to have to wait till February to get it. Anyway, good stuff here. 2.6 pounds to 2.8 pounds. Good fast performance. A stunning, nearly no bezel display on this thing. It's good. The price is not cheap if you go for the touchscreen model. Might be my only complaint. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and don't forget to hit that like button.